Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. What if Paul, Peter, John came from heaven to earth and to observe what is going on, and they walked into the average church, they would say, how did what we just started 2,000 years ago evolve to this? They would say something like this, oi vey. <laughs> uh, oi vey, uh, loosely translated, means oi vey. <laughs> I have Dr. Robert Harper here. He's a graduate of Dallas Theological Seminary. He was a fighting fundy. He hated, you actually hated people speaking in tongues, am I right? Oh, absolutely. So what did God do for you and your wife? He got tired of us doing that, and literally <laughs> overnight he baptized us in the Holy Spirit. We spoke in tongues. We didn't even know what was going on. We just knew God had invaded our house. Okay, I'm going to take you in a time machine. Okay. I want to take you back to the very first church. Uh, it was very, very different than what we have today. What we have today, a church service is someone standing on a platform uh, and, uh, and the members looking at the back of someone's head <laughs> and, and then going home to a chicken dinner or something. Uh, but what was the early church really like? Okay, well Sid, picture it this way. You have just parked your DeLorean time machine on the streets of ancient Rome. You get out and you walk down the street to where the church is meeting. It's a home. You knock on the door. The host welcomes you and brings you inside. And in the large courtyard in the center of the house, there's a party going on. There's flutes and lyres and tambourines and people are singing and dancing and clapping their hands. And you look around and you think, am I in the right place? So, but, so you know what I'm hearing? You don't have to go to church. You want to go to you church. That's to the go. way it was. Go, go on. Okay, so, so you, you say, am I, am I in the right place? This seems like it's a party. And then things quiet down and they bring out food. And you have a meal right there in church. As the meal begins, the lady of the house will light two candles to welcome the presence of God. Then a man stands and he says a blessing over some bread and over a cup of wine, and they pass it around. That's the Lord's Supper in its original context. Then there's someone gives a word of knowledge for healing, and a man said, oh, that's me. And people gather around, lay hands on him. He's instantly healed. You look, and there's a couple, a family, toward the back of the uh, area, and you can tell this is their first time here because they're they seem uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but their daughter, has contracted a disease that's left her totally blind. And they've heard that people can get healed in the church. And so they've come for prayer for their daughter. And so the elders of the church come and they anoint her with oil and pray for her. And the presence of the Lord is there. And suddenly the little girl begins to cry and she says, I can see, I can see. And within minutes, the whole family is saved, giving their hearts to Jesus. That's how a lot of evangelism took place in the early church. People encountered the power of God, the miracles of God, and they didn't care if they'd be persecuted for becoming a Christian. They wanted reality. And so that's how the church began to spread. And it was a very Jewish uh, kind of a Christianity. You, you say that the, the roots of the church were 
taken out intentionally by Constantine. Why did he do that? Constantine hated the Jews. Because the Jews, remember, they had rebelled against Rome mm -hmm. several times. He viewed them as a, host, a people hostile to the Roman Empire. And so when he claimed to make his profession of faith to become a Christian, he found so much Jewish things in the church that it, he, he hated it. And so he, he called a council called the Council of Nicaea. And one of the things he did in that council was to outlaw everything Jewish in Christianity. He said, you may not celebrate Passover anymore. You may not celebrate Shabbat anymore. And he really reinvented Christianity. He reinvented the church without its Jewish roots. Okay, you say the church, and you get this from Romans, is like a tree, explain. Okay, in Romans, it describes the church as a fruitful olive tree. And it really is important to understand this if we want to understand what the church really is from God's perspective. He says there's the root, and that's what the church draws its life from. The root is the Abra Abrahamic covenant. It's 2,000 years of revelation that God gave to the Jewish people that, uh, that were the rich sap that fed the church. Then there are the branches. The, the natural branches of the tree are New Testament Messianic Judaism. They were Jews who knew the Messiah, but drew on their rich heritage and all that God had poured into Israel. But then there's another set of branches, and those are broken off branches. And that is, that is rabbinic Judaism. It is Jews who have rejected the Messiah and been cut off. Now the whole tree is theirs. It all belongs to them. And God says someday they will be returned and regrafted into the tree. But right now, as those were broken off, God took branches from a wild olive tree, which is Gentiles, and engrafted them into the root so Gentiles could experience the blessings of God's covenant with Abraham. In this restoration of the biblical roots of the church, uh, there's two extremes to avoid. Explain. Well, said there are two extremes because there are some people and they hear talk about Jewish roots and they react against it. They think, oh, that's Old Testament. It's somehow being disloyal to Jesus, that you're rejecting Jesus. And they forget the fact that Jesus was Jewish. The apostles were Jewish. Paul said those things written in the Old Testament are there for our benefit. The other extreme, though, are those that get into studying Jewish roots and they get very excited because there's a lot of revelation they have not heard there before. And they dive into that to the point where they reject the new covenant. And they end up in legalism and they end up really being modern day Pharisees where they hold to the forms of what the Bible describes, but they've really lost the spirit of it. And God does not want us to do either one of those. He wants us to have uh, the truth of God's revelation, but also under the grace and the freedom of the new covenant. And that's when the power of God is really released. But what areas of blessings uh, do you see we, we have by observing these feasts in a new covenant style? Well, Sid, you get blessed in every area of life. There's blessing for your family. There's blessing for your health. There's blessing in your relationships. There's blessing in your finances. Most of all, there's blessing in your relationship with God because you come to meet him in a whole new way when you meet with him at his appointed times. And I'll tell you what, the way Robert explained the first church, maybe that's what Jesus meant when he says the first will be last. Maybe there's a restoration of everything, but there is such a freedom in these feasts. Uh, I, I have my staff that have been believers their whole life, and they say, I've never heard these things before. Uh, Robert, when we come back, I want you to teach in a new covenant freedom fashion each of the feasts. Be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get Dr. Robert Heidler's book, The Messianic Church Arising, and four-part DVD teaching set, God's Calendar, yours for a donation of $45. Ask for offer number 9387. Shipping and handling is included. Through his powerful book, Dr. Heidler unfolds God's plan for the Jew and Gentile alike. The purpose of this book is not to make you Jewish, but to help you experience Christianity as God has always intended it and regain the blessings of your lost inheritance. Through this book, you will access the all-but-forgotten riches of God 
God's covenant blessing. Recover God's plan for supernatural rest and refreshing in your life. Learn how to celebrate each biblical feast so you can fully enter into the blessings of God's appointed times. Understand how the biblical feasts are actually your doorway to access heaven in a powerful way. Learn how getting in sync with God's heavenly calendar will actually cut off the enemy's strategies against you. Reach new levels of intimacy with God. Plus, you receive Dr. Robert Heidler's anointed four-part DVD teaching series. Rosh Kadesh is a celebration of each new month in God's Hebraic calendar. Through this DVD series, you will understand the supernatural power of Rosh Kadesh, a celebration that occurs each new month in God's Hebraic calendar. Receive the keys to a life of joy, contentment, and divine health. Discover how to open up God's supernatural supply for financial prosperity. Learn about the significance of God's seven appointed times and the cycle of blessings they bring. At the end of teaching, there are anointed prayers for you to move forward and increase your boundaries. Remove curses and push back the attacks of the enemy. Access God's promises and blessings for your life. Receive the authority to move into your promised land. Gentile Christians celebrate wonderful feasts that have pagan roots. Mm -hmm. What if you would celebrate the Messiah with biblical roots. God's given it to us. He actually, in the Hebrew, it says God's appointments, God's appointed times. If you had an appointment with God, would you miss it? Don't miss out on getting Dr. Robert Heidler's book, The Messianic Church Arising, and four-part DVD teaching set, God's Calendar, yours for a donation of $45. Ask for offer number 9387. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9387 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. God calls His biblical feast appointments with Him. They're appointments so that you can draw closer to God. That's why some of the feasts, he says, observe them forever. Now, Robert, in light of the new covenant, uh, uh, how, do, how do you, how does your family, how does your church family uh, observe these feasts? Let's, let's like we're, we're in the, uh, the month of Nisan, which is Passover right now. Uh, let's start with Passover. Well, said the first thing a Christian needs to understand about Passover is that Passover is all about Jesus. When uh, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said, behold the lamb. The apostle Paul writes, Christ our Passover lamb has been slain, therefore let us celebrate the feast. In the book of Revelation, all of heaven joins together in a big praise celebration, worshiping Jesus as the lamb that was slain. That's Passover. And so the first thing we need to see is this is a very Christian thing to do. It was the most important feast in the early church. And so as we come together and we celebrate Passover, the Passover, Passover is really celebrated around a meal. It's a designed to be celebrated around a table in your home, with your family, with some friends. You know, coming from a traditional Jewish background, I have to tell you what I enjoyed most about the feast was getting together with family and having yeah. that meal. It's a, uh, there's a warmth. It's, it, it actually ties the family together. But had I understood the meaning of the feast and some of the things, revelation that you've had, but go on. Okay, well, when the family comes together, the mother initiates the, the, uh, the activity, lighting the candles. The uh, father has a section, but even the children have a section. They have questions. Why is this night different from all others? And that really, everything else in the celebration answers the question of the child. So this is a generational feast. And we come together and there's bitter herbs that make, bring tears to your eyes. And that reminds Israel of the painful bondage in Egypt. It reminds us as Christians of what life was like before we knew Jesus. But then there's the lamb, the Passover lamb, that the blood was shed. And because of that, we are redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Somebody said the most powerful confession you can make in deliverance ministry is to say, I am redeemed by the blood of the lamb out of the hand of the enemy. 
And if you can stay that and say that in faith and continue saying that, it will break off the oppression of the enemy. And that's really what Passover is. It is a declaration that we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb out of the hand of the enemy. And so when you celebrate Passover, you're celebrating Jesus. It's a time to worship Him. It's a time to declare your freedom that He's purchased for you. Uh, and that releases faith. When the devil tries to come and bring some aspect of the curse into your life, you just say, no, de devil, you can't bring that to me because I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb out of the hand of the enemy. So Passover is a tremendous time and it, it's really the starting point in moving forward with the Lord to know that we are redeemed and we're free to move forward into the promise. And you know, one of the things I love, and actually I say the same thing as Robert, I am so glad we celebrate uh, the Lord's resurrection on Sunday because that allows us to fulfill what the Bible says about the Shabbat. It's a day of rest. How could it be a day of rest if we're running out uh, and putting our suit on or, or, or going to church? And we, uh, I think God is brilliant having Sunday worship so we can have a true day of rest. Do you look forward to the Sabbath of Shabbat? Oh, it's the high point of our week. Every Friday morning, well, Linda and I wake up and we think, oh, Shabbat starts tonight. <laughs> and somebody asked me, why doesn't your church meet on Saturday? And I think it's fine for a church to meet on Saturday. But personally, I'm glad ours doesn't because I like my Saturday to be my, my Shabbat when I can rest. And then I worship Jesus as the one, as my resurrected Lord on Sunday. And amazingly, that's what the early church did. You know what you do on the Shabbat? You enter into such peace. It's you literally enter in to the atmosphere of heaven. One more feast quickly. Okay, well, tabernacles, which is the high point of the feast, and tabernacles is a celebration of the glory of God. When God saw Israel down in the wilderness, each one living in their little tent, he said to Moses, make a tent for me too and I will come down and dwell with you. And so it's tabernacle celebrates the glory of God coming and tabernacling with us so we can experience His glory and His blessing. The thing that is so important is Robert points out that these are God appointments, that's what it actually says in the Hebrew, and they're cycles. Some of you are in a cycle uh, of discouragement, in cycles uh, uh, of problems, this is a way to break out of those cycles. When we come back, I'll have Robert explain. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, I want to make sure that you understand that these feasts are not a bunch of rules and regulations. This is a new covenant way. So, like Robert, you were explaining, you have the bitter herbs and things that pass up. Do you know what? You say, Holy Spirit, show us how this year, it's not the same every year, how Amen. this year you want us to celebrate this particular feast. It, it's sort of like it will be exciting rather than ritual. I, I, I'll tell you, I used to get bored with the feast in, in Messianic Jewish circles. They were the same old, same old all the time. Uh, but this is fresh and vibrant. Now, you talk about cycles of blessings. Uh, explain these cycles uh, and how most people are out of sync because they don't understand the cycles. Well, God put, has cycles for our lives. There's a weekly cycle of Shabbat. He wants us to pull aside from our activities and have a day-long feast to celebrate Him, to enjoy His goodness, to overflow with praise. If we don't do that, we will not experience the goodness of God in our life the way He wants us to. 
and faith will decrease. Then he has a monthly cycle of Rosh Kodesh at the, the Jews would meet at the beginning of every month for a praise celebration and to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying prophetically about the month ahead. Now, now you know, a lot of believers have heard of Passover and Day of Atonement, but they've never heard of Rosh Chodesh. Is this important? Oh, it's very important. In, in the New Testament, it was considered one of the most important times because it's really a principle of first fruit. You know, in the Bible, it says, if you give God the first, then it releases favor, it releases blessing. When your crops come in, you bring the first sheaf as a first fruits offering, your whole crop is blessed. That works with our time as well. I mean, you start the month saying the first thing we're going to do this month is we're going to meet together, we're going to praise God for His goodness, we're going to listen to the prophets to hear what they say. It's like that honors God to put Him first and that releases His favor and His blessing in our lives. So tell me about people that are in the wrong cycle, cycle of problems, cycle of financial woes, cycle of health woes. Uh, how do they get out of this? Well, Satan loves to trap people in destructive cycles, and he'll put you in a cycle where you just, it's like you go around and around and you get lower every time around. Mm -hmm. And people, every year seems worse than the year before. But God's solution is to get in His cycle. And if you, get, if you receive His revelation, if you walk in what He's saying, you get in a different kind of cycle that every year you're closer to Him. Every year you experience more of His blessing. And I like to put it this way, living in this world is like being on an escalator going down. You don't have to try very hard to end up far away from God. People that are, are, are far from God didn't get there because they said, I don't think I want to experience God's blessing anymore. I think I'll um, go off and do my own thing. They just drifted that way. But God's appointed times are designed to be we're, times where we meet with God and He does spiritual transactions in our lives that lift us up. So it's like getting on an escalator going up. And as the longer you stay on it, the more you experience of Him, if you've gotten off track, those feasts, those appointed times will give you opportunities to get back on track, to move forward into the blessing God has. What is your favorite feast of all? Oh, let's ask, that's like asking which of my kids I like best. <laughs> uh, I think tabernacles. It is just so much fun. It is so joyful. The presence of God comes. And uh, I mean, you really make it a celebration. The world, uh, some of you, you, you think New Year's is something. You think Mardi Gras is something. You don't know what a celebration is until you are accompanied by the presence of God, until the glory of God pours in, all those shofars being blown and they rejoicing and the fun. Uh, maybe that's what God meant when He said in His Word, a merry heart is good medicine. Amen. And said, uh, you know, I don't preach against the traditional holidays. Because what I've found is when people begin to celebrate the biblical feasts, all of a sudden those traditional holidays just don't seem very important because there's so much joy and there's so much reality in the biblical feasts. Did God really want this? Was this yes. His intent for the church in your heart of hearts? Absolutely. And it was, it was something that's been stolen from us, but God is giving it back. And it's... By the way, this is Passover. That means it's the month, the Jewish month of Nisan. Do you know what that means in Hebrew? Miracles. Do you need a miracle? Well, God is telling me there are miracles in the hands, in the fingers, arthritis is gone. There's someone with a paralyzed uh, hand. If you'll just open it up, you'll see that you just got a Nisan. You just got a miracle. I pray in Yeshua's name that whatever you need is yours. Amen. Do you find that your prayers go unanswered? Have you asked God for a breakthrough, but you haven't seen any fruit? Are you or your loved ones experiencing attacks from the enemy? There is an answer. 
Did you know that there is a way to get into sync with God's kingdom and God's divine calendar? God designed His calendar so each month you would be in sync with His blessings and promises. Call now and get Dr. Robert Heidler's book, The Messianic Church Arising, and four-part DVD teaching set, God's Calendar, yours for a donation of $45. Ask for offer number 9387. Shipping and handling is included. Through his powerful book, Dr. Heidler unfolds God's plan for the Jew and Gentile alike. The purpose of this book is not to make you Jewish, but to help you experience Christianity as God has always intended it and regain the blessings of your lost inheritance. Through this book, you will access the all but forgotten riches of God's covenant blessing. Recover God's plan for supernatural rest and refreshing in your life. Learn how to celebrate each biblical feast so you can fully enter into the blessings of God's appointed times. Understand how the biblical feasts are actually your doorway to access heaven in a powerful way. Learn how getting in sync with God's heavenly calendar will actually cut off off the enemy's strategies against you. Reach new levels of intimacy with God. Plus, you receive Dr. Robert Heidler's anointed four-part DVD teaching series. Rosh Kadesh is a celebration of each new month in God's Hebraic calendar. Each month carries with it different characteristics and truths about God's timing that you need to know and walk in. Through this DVD series, you will understand the supernatural power of Rosh Kadesh, a celebration that occurs each new month in God's Hebraic calendar. Receive the keys to a life of joy, contentment, and divine health. Discover how to open up God's supernatural supply for financial prosperity. Learn about the significance of God's seven appointed times and the cycle of blessings they bring. At the end of teaching, there are anointed prayers for you to move forward and increase your boundaries, remove curses, and push back the attacks of the enemy. Access God's promises and blessings for your life. Receive the authority to move into your promised land. Gentile Christians celebrate wonderful feasts that have pagan roots. Mm -hmm. What if you would celebrate the Messiah with biblical roots? I mean, it, it, it's just a no-brainer. God's given it to us. He actually, in the Hebrew, it says God's appointments. God's appointed times. Now, if you had an appointment with God, would you miss it? That's why God calls it divine appointment. So the book, The Messianic Church Arising, and the four DVD set, God's calendar, get it, do it, have your family blessed. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Robert Heidler's book, The Messianic Church Arising, and four-part DVD teaching set, God's Calendar, yours for a donation of $45. Ask for offer number 9387. Shipping and handling is included. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9387 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today next week on It's Supernatural. Too many people, because of not seeing the results they <laughs> expected, have actually changed their theology. It's time for a faith detox. It's absolutely time for a 30-day adventure in the supernatural of God to be normal normal as defined by the Bible.